Hey folks, today I have prepared 10 more pieces of amber with awesome inclusions inside. All of these are around 99 million years old. All of these I was holding for a while to gather 10 of them to make a photography session with my digital microscope and let's make some macro photos. It's really easy setup. I will use just some LED lights, digital microscope and I do have a new simple gadget to improve my setup. The gadget is a mirror. <laughs> and I will show you how I will use it just in a second. I will show you in a second why I will use a mirror. Let's take our first this flying inset in rather dark piece of amber. And let's put it under microscope the way it is right now, without the mirror, to see the difference. Or rather under it. And let's get as close as possible. There we go, this is the picture. The picture is not bad, but it's very dark and lots of details from the eyes and the body are missing. So it does already look rather cool, right? But quite dark. So let's try putting on a mirror in there. And there we go, giant difference in light and details, and the only difference in the setup was the mirror. So the flying insect has quite a menacing name, the scorpion fly. The name comes from the scorpion-like tail, but that tail is used only for, for the reproduction. This fly doesn't bite or sting. Very nicely preserved specimen, looks really cool under microscope. And um, yep, this flying insect is called the scorpion fly and in Latin Mecoptera. So basically, as you can see, the mirror did a hell of a big difference in the light. It does give a little bit of not intensive light because my microscope is very uh, sensitive to light. If I give it too much, the inclusions become red. So basically, the mirror is perfect solution for the gear like I do have. And let's not waste any time, let's pick another piece. Let's take this tiny piece of amber and let's see what's inside because with the naked eye it's even hard to tell what this is. And this super tiny insect is from the order Hymenoptera. More precisely would be the sawfly. Wasps evolved into angry stinging assholes from these guys. Sawflies got their name from the saw-like mouth parts, which they used to cut into plants to lay eggs. This is very transparent and insect is nicely preserved. Love that its head looks like a motorbike helmet. <laughs> this piece just proves that never underestimate tiny insects, because tiny doesn't mean not cool. This one is impressive as hell. I love this motor helmet-like head. And yeah, let's take another one. Uh, what should we take? Ooh, maybe another tiny one. The piece is not tiniest, but I have this one. And this one is even smaller, but let's see, maybe as exciting as the last one. It's a super tiny diptera fly. I call these the pee, pee flies, but this one has enormous head, totally not proportional to the rest of the body. Each insect is unique, and I can appreciate the difference between each ember inclusion. And I was right, it's pee, pee fly, but it's magnificent, giant freaking head. <laughs> I love it. Either way, next piece. 
very pleasing shape, lots of bubbles inside, well, not bubbles, maybe there was some sort of bubbles, not anymore. Either way, let's put it under microscope. I didn't expect this bug to be a cockroach. I haven't seen species like this one before, and it's not an adult yet. This fellow haven't grown his wings yet. It's around 7 mm in body length, so not the tiniest insect inclusion. This roach surrounded by air bubbles looks magical. Some of these bubbles could contain water droplets inside. And I was thinking this was some sort of rough beetle, and I was wrong. Under magnification, we could identify it as close as being a cockroach, but unusual one. I don't know the exact species, but if someone knows in the comments, please let me know. And without further ado, let's pick another piece. This time, <laughs> let's pick a, one more black tiny beetle. Looks a bit like a marsh beetle, but I'm not convinced. It's so black that I didn't manage to get any details from its carapace. Just a black surface. Can't tell you too much about it, but every single inclusion in ember is magical and doesn't matter the size. Yeah, unfortunately can't say too much about this tiny beetle, other than it's a black tiny beetle and I couldn't get any details because it's black. <laughs> the insect itself is black. Either way, I figured it's time for a plant. I'm not expert on plants in ember, but this looks like a pine tree branch. Very distinct needle-like leaves. Unfortunately, it's quite oxidized, so microscope photos wasn't any good. Still impressive looking as every plant in ember. Plants are a lot more rare than insects in ember. This plant is awesome, but yeah, it's quite oxidized and I couldn't get any details from the picture, but I'm pretty sure it's a, some sort of pine. Yeah, let's take something yet again tiny, but this one is interesting, because this little fellow is a ant. And I know that I have showed plenty of ants before, like uh, last week I did show you 30 ants in one piece of Madagascar copal. If you haven't watched that video, go and check it out, it was a hell of a, hell of a ride, the preparation of that piece. The difference with the copal is that this piece is 99 million years old, while the Madagascar, Madagascar copal ants were around 1000 years old, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less. So yeah, let's put this prehistoric ant under the microscope and let's check how does it look. This tiny fellow is only 3 mm in body length, but it's definitely an ant. Unfortunately, I could make pictures only from this one side, where we can't see the mandibles. There's only one hint of mandibles sticking from the side. Species is still not defined. It could be Zygrasimetia species, but one of the Cretaceous ant experts told that the body composition looks more like a Gerontoformica, which is an extinct genus that contains 13 described species from the late Cretaceous period. Yeah, the answer is something else. Always so freaking exciting to hold in your hand something that's already fully extinct. It has another feeling when you hold something like this. Let's inspect this one next. Nail size, literally, nail size, could be your nail. And what's inside? Damn, with naked eye barely visible, to be honest. I wonder what's inside. Let's just put it under microscope. With decent magnification, it's still hard to spot the inclusion. But there it is, it does have literally the same color as the ember itself. But when we magnify it even further, now we see that it's a tiny nymph of a long-tailed cricket. Fantastically preserved. I think read with the light a bit to see the difference in details, and overall very lovely specimen. Okay, we are down to two pieces. Both are not the smallest one, inclusion is also, but I will keep the best for the last. We will check this one. A lot of things going on in this piece, it's like full of debris, but from the top of the surface there's something interesting and let's see what exactly this is. We had beetles in today's episode already, and now we have a beetle larva, 
so this warm like looking maggot would have been a coleoptera beetle if it wouldn't tragically stuck in raisin. Now it's gonna stay young forever. It has good preservation, but this piece needs recutting to make better pictures. Yep, I kept this one for last. Big beetle, and I can see the eight sharp mandibles from up here. But the piece is quite dark. I wonder how the picture will turn out. But this one is the most ex exciting of all of this. Well, at least size-wise and rarity, probably. Ooh, look. Can you see the iridescent colors? Wow, can it be it was metallic... Uh, had it metallic armor, maybe. I wonder if the iridescence will be kept when we will put it under microscope. Okay, let's not waste your time, let's put it under microscope right now. Wow! Look how cool does it look! It have kept the iridescence on the carapace and it does have a big mandibles. After doing tiny bit of looking for the species, it turns out that this is so-called Passalopalpidaea beetle. It is known only from the Burmite Ember. This beetle is extinct for a long time, so we have a pleasure of holding another fully extinct organism in our hands. This can be found only in the Ember, and they have it. It's amazing piece for my growing collection. Judging by the big sharp mandibles, this beetle was most likely a predator. If I could wish for anything else, I would wish that this piece of amber would be a bit lighter, so we could get even more details of this amazing specimen. Oof, this thing looks like it could bite your finger off, if it would be just a little more bigger. <laughs> it's not bad, for insect inclusion in amber it's quite big, because bigger stuff uh, it can ex escape the raisin more easily. And yeah, that piece concludes today's video. I hope you did enjoy it. All these cool inclusions, uh, every single piece through all the videos, we, I try to get you a different species of insects so we can see more and more diversity in the Cretaceous period, period when the ecosystem was still in place 99 million years ago. And yeah, I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, smash that like button and, pull, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye!